call this, or I will call this uh, Tuesday, February 9th, meeting of the Water and Sewer Board to order. And at this time, I would like to go for oral attendance here. We'll start with Drivis. I'm here. <laughs> Chuck. Present. Don. Don Roth here. John. Present. Caitlin. Present. Mayor Olson. Here. Councilman Anderson. Present. All right. Well, all of the uh, board members here, but we've got city people here too. If you want to identify yourself, starting with uh, Brenda. Brenda Varner. Yes. And we got uh, Miss um, Angela Goodman, right? Angela Goodman here. And we have Mr. Steve Simon. That is correct here. Okay. And we have Mike came on board here, I see. Yes, All right. You guys. Very good. Needing a motion for approval of the minutes from the board meeting of January 12th. Is there a motion to accept the minutes? So moved. Do we have a second? I'll second. Second by Don. All right. Any amendments or changes by anybody? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 Minutes are approved. All right, Brenda, is there anybody that has shown a desire to be public forum on this meeting? Uh, public forum tonight. Nobody? Nope. Nope. Okay. Well, that makes it simple enough. Well, we'll move clear down to number five, new business. A, the Allen Water Treatment Plant Granular Activated Carbon GAC Removal and Replacement. And I guess Angela is going to bring us up to date on that. Yeah. Um, good evening, Mayor and members of the board. Thank you for letting me uh, present on our exciting and uh, new project that we're going to be doing. I will share my screen with you guys. Uh, here we go. Can you see my PowerPoint? We do. Excellent. So this is the Granular Activated Carbon or GAC Replacement Project. Uh, at the Allen Water Treatment Plant, we have five filters. Um, to make it really confusing, we decommissioned filter one uh, many years ago, and so now we have filters two through uh, six. And as you can see from both this column right here and then this nice little graphic, um, there is 36 inches of granular activated carbon in the filter itself, followed by six inches of sand and then 10 inches of gravel at the bottom. And uh, the way these things work is water flows in from the top and gets filtered through these various layers and then comes out through the under drain. And it is recommended that the granular activated carbon media be replaced every five years. And we're looking at replacing the filter uh, media in filters five and six uh, in March. And that cost is $398,932. And since a picture is worth a thousand words or potentially $398,932, I thought we'd show you some pictures. Uh, this first picture right here is um, kind of the finishing stages of sucking all of the granular activated carbon out of the filter itself. And they leave the sand in the bottom and the gravel that stays. And so here's a nice picture of a gentleman kind of standing pretty similar to that one where he's standing in the filter bed, sucking all of that anthracite out. And then it actually goes all the way through these hoses into this hopper where they bag it in a uh, dispensed bag. That filter media is then actually shipped off where it's either disposed of or regenerated. We have standardized on using virgin carbon because it's a little bit better for the filter process itself and it lasts a little bit longer. And then this next slide. Uh, so this shows kind of how the staging for this project will take over your parking lot. And so these are all bags of new granular activated carbon that gets dumped into this hopper you add a little bit of water and then it gets pumped into the filters right here where you see this gentleman standing down in there holding the hose with all of that water and media. And so 
The water actually helps it disperse a bit more evenly over the floor of the filter bed itself. The entire process really only takes about a day per filter. The majority of the time is spent procuring all of the material for, for the granular activated carbon itself and then staging on site, getting, getting everything set up. And then after the project is complete, demobilizing all the stuff in and getting rid of everything at the job site. So thank you for letting me give you this, this quick presentation on the granular activated carbon replacement projects and let me know if you have any questions. Does anybody of the uh, group wish to question Angela or make a <laughs> comment? Oh, I lost you guys. Yeah, I, I just wondered if, um, do the other filters, the hoppers still work while you're changing out the process or do you shut it down while you do it? So we, we switch all the operation of the plant over to the other filters that are working. And so that's why we actually try to do projects like this during the low demand season. So in the summer, we typically will be putting out somewhere between 11, 10 to 11 million gallons per day of water. And that requires three to four filters to be in service. And so then we have one that's, that's kept for backup um, for redundancy and then also for use for backwashes. During the winter months where we have lower demand, it's more like 3 million gallons per day. And so we're able to run off of two filters so that you would not see any, any uh, operational modification to the plant at all while we're doing this project. We just take those two particular filters out of service in its entirety. Cool, okay. Anybody else? What about uh, the filters uh, two, three, and four? When do you anticipate taking those off? Those were actually, we replaced the granular activated carbon in those back in 2017. So we'll probably be coming with a remarkably similar presentation in another two to three years to replace the media in those filters. So they run about six years per filter? Or? Yep, right about, right about five, somewhere between three to three to six years, yeah. Mm -hmm. Good. Yeah. All right. Well, if nobody has anything further on the item, can I get a motion to <clears throat> recommend that City Council approve a contract for service agreement in the amount of $398,932 with Calgon Carbon Corporation for the GAC removal and replacement project for the Alum Water Treatment Plant? Do I have a motion? I move. Well, Caitlin moves, second? Second. Second by the mayor. Any other comments or crowd? No, I think comments? the second was Travis, wasn't it? It was Travis. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. All right. I'm sorry, Mayor. All right. <laughs> we have a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Boy, that was easy. All right. Now the next item is old business. You have anything, Peter, that you uh, want to bring up? We actually have one more uh, item on new business. It was more of a, it was an update item on the okay, monthly yeah. billing. I, I apologize, I missed that there. Update on our monthly utility bill. And I guess, Peter, you're gonna handle that. Yeah, I, so I just wanted to give the uh, board a quick update on where we're at, uh, where we've come, where we're at, and where we're heading as it relates to transitioning to monthly bill bills. If you recall last year when we were uh, going through the rate and fee process and incorporating the new capital investment fee. One of the things that we are uh, committed to doing was switching to monthly billing to allow people to budget for their water bills or their utility bill uh, on a monthly basis as opposed to getting a, a big hit every quarter. And that's a, it's a fairly complex process. And we've, had, we've also had some unforeseen events occur that has impacted that process. So, the, the first part of this process is, is changing the way we read meters. And so right now we read meters on a quarterly basis. So there's a, there's a uh, meter read for one quadrant for that quarter, and then there's another one for another quadrant the next month of that quarter, and then the third area is done on the third month. We're gonna compress that down to three weeks within that particular month. Last fall, we actually had uh, a, 
a couple individuals who uh, were our seasoned veterans for this organization who uh, uh, one individual retired and unfortunately the other individual actually suddenly passed away. And so in November of this past year, we had one meter reader that had six weeks of experience and Angela was managing that team with, with uh, the, the new staff. And then and we fortunately were able to hire a new meter reader who has a tremendous amount of experience out of Colorado Springs. And then we have, uh, we subsequently hired a new meter supervisor who then five weeks later decided that this wasn't a place that he wanted to work and subsequently left. And so, so on the meter side, we've been actually having some challenges. Um, it, it, uh, if you didn't hear Chuck Mary, who had been here for many, many years, uh, one day was out in the field and actually uh, suddenly collapsed and passed away. And so we had to deal with that and, 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 and these other issues related to the meter reading side. And we have a, we've, we've got a good strategy. We've got a good plan. We brought in a consultant to help us revise our meter routes to make them more efficient. Um, we have a uh, meter supervisor position out on the street for recruitment. Same thing with a field services technician or, or a meter reader also on the street. We think we've got some good interest in those positions. And um, additionally, we've pulled staff from other areas of utilities to help support this initiative. We have a plan. We think that plan will work. And uh, ultimately in the short term, we'll, we'll make that work by, by pulling from other areas, uh, resources, and then longer term, we'll get this area fully staffed up essentially with a brand new set of staff that uh, can really actually um, update and modernize many of the processes that's our, our um, we still have a lot of things that were done in paper and things like that. So that's the meter side. On the billing side, there's the information comes from the meter read and it goes to the billing system. We've got a couple things moving forward on the billing side, one of which is a new billing software that council approved uh, moving forward with in January, I think in January, uh, or was it, it may have been February, which just recently moved forward. And um, so we've got that project that's kicking off at the end of February, but that's a long-term project to fully revamp and, and incorporate a new billing system, which will give us a whole, a whole lot more features. It'll be more, much, more user, much more user interface. Uh, as we improve our metering technology, it'll, it'll be able to dovetail with those improvements in technology, which will ultimately, way down the road, we want to have it so that people can real-time monitor their their bills and be able to monitor their water use and 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 really have control over how they how they use their um, how they use their water. That's that's the long term goal. We're still several years off from that, but this is one of those initial steps to to accommodate that. However, that billing software is not going to be in place by the time that we need to be on monthly billing. So we we're working with the existing billing software company to convert our quarterly billing to monthly billing. We've got a uh, contract with them to make that adjustment. We anticipate kicking that uh, fully off uh, next, either by the end of this week or early next week. And based on their schedule, they said that will be tight, but they expect that we will be able, be able to get that done. And so the plan would be that the first the first set of full reads for uh, monthly billing will be occurring in May, which means that, that that first bill that people see will actually be in June because it's the May read. So it happens in April that we are starting the monthly bill. The first read occurs in May and then the bill goes out in June. So we still have some time to get uh, before the customer is actually gonna see that monthly bill. However, we've got a lot of mechanical mechanics that are working in the background in terms of make all, all those things coming together. We are also working on an outreach flyer that we anticipate will come out 
likely in early March, uh, probably around the first week of March, which will highlight uh, all the changes. So there'll be two parallels. There'll be an existing bill that's quarterly, a new bill that's monthly. It'll show the new capital investment fee for water. It'll um, talk about the changes. It'll talk about the schedule based on where you are in the city. It has a map so you can then look at where you are in the city relative to the schedule. And it's really an informational uh, document that'll come out, that'll get mailed to everybody so that they can be ready for when the transition occurs in, in uh, early uh, May timeframe. Additionally, we were, were at the time of the, the first monthly bill, we're anticipating putting something in the actual bill itself to alert people to get their attention that, hey, this is your first monthly bill. That's under development as well. And so there's a lot of pieces that are coming together right now. And I just wanted the, the, to update the board so that you understood that we were, that we are pulling all this together right now and that we, we it's like I said, it's gonna be tight, but we anticipate that we will be making it. I, I am hopeful that it goes perfectly. However, I'm also a realist as it relates to any types of these conversions. So part of the flyer will have a, a number of resources. So you, to either call or check the website or ways for a customer to uh, address any kind of an issue that they may see in their bill. Um, and I think that covers all the main points that I wanted to cover with the, with the board and, and get any feedback or thoughts or questions. There you are, guys. Anybody have any comments, questions? Sounds like you're awful busy. <laughs> Mayor. Um, Director Van Rye, can were you on the call last Monday night for not this not last night but the week before with the gentleman who talked about his bill, and it was an unfortunate interchange with one of our council members. But um, uh, oh yeah, oh, yes, yes, uh, the gentleman who's lived here for fifty five years, I think is what he said. He he's maybe been here so. For, is, yeah. Did anybody reach out to him? I feel really badly. I didn't follow up. I had sort of a crazy, difficult week, I, last week for work, but. I'm not exactly sure. I can check with Maria because his, his questions were about the stormwater rate increase um, that were coming oh. through. I can check with yeah, Director DeAndre. Yeah, maybe that's true. And I'm, I, I'm thinking that it's the, it's the joining of the two. <laughs> Yep. And the increases that that is for someone who is unlimited income. Um, just wondering if we, yeah, I'm glad to call him too. I, I just, I keep forgetting to ask Sean for info on him because I, I feel like we held, we did not handle that well at all. And, um, you know, what I can do is I, I'll, I'll, I'll coordinate with Maria and um, because, because the, what he's seeing right now is the stormwater charges. He hasn't seen the water come through yet because the water doesn't come through until April. So we should probably educate him and, and at least yeah. get him aware. I'm, that glad, I'm glad to oh. join in and talk with him about it too, if, if you need me to, but I, I really felt badly about how that was, how that was handled. And yeah, I did. I did see that exchange and, and I, I, I understand what you're saying. Thank you. Let me know. I, we can follow up later too, but. We might okay. have more people that are going to be, you know, really shocked, even though I think your communication has been tremendous. Um, it's just people still don't pay attention. And well, and actually, that's one of the other things that we're in, we're developing right now. And it's it's something that we're going to give to the utility billing staff. We're going to give it to our customers where my plan is to give it to council. It's to give it to water and sewer board members. And it's a it's a set of frequently asked questions. So when they say, our, our rates are out of control and they're, they're so much bigger, we, so much uh, uh, bigger than everyone else nearby, we'll have available for you right in the moment, the comparison to Denver and Aurora and Lakewood. And so that when they say, well, this is out of control, you can say, well, we're still the lowest of the, of the metro area, even though it's come up. So we're working on that document as well. And to have that in everyone's hands likely in the April timeframe, because we anticipate questions will start really rolling in in, in uh, probably May, June timeframe. That'll be helpful. I, I think the other feature of it is just that it's such a jump, right? We know that it's a big jump. 
for them, even, and we have to take it in the elected realm in the city, perhaps too, of just not having done the right thing over the, over the years by doing incremental increases. So it's not so jarring, but, um, and I'm willing to say that and apologize, but at the same time, explaining it is really helpful. Yeah. And I think part of the messaging too, is that the customers in the city have been getting a really, really screaming deal for many, many, many years Amen. as it relates to the rest of the front range. Um, I don't know that everybody thinks that, but that's that's the reality when you do the bill comparison. You're right. Very good. Anybody else have any other comments? Um, I, I just comment. I didn't Look, hold up. Sorry. Right, I'll wait. Go ahead, Drivis. Okay. Um, my husband and I have property in Denver, and they sent out a really weird little blurb, and I'll follow up on it and maybe pass it along. But they said something about planning on increasing their bill, their water bill, but that they were holding off because of COVID. I don't know if they were trying to prep things, but um, I was going to call them and get more information on it. But just so you know, there was that put out there, not that necessarily people in Inglewood would know, but there might be some pushback from that perspective. Well, if Denver can hold off, why can't you guys hold off? Just so that you know, it's, it's out there. Yeah, and I think that's a really good point. And I, and I have heard from other utilities who have delayed any rate increases because of, uh, because of the, the, the pandemic. And that's where what we want to be able to have our, you know, uh, informationally provide the information to all of you is Denver's water bill is X dollars and Englewood's right. water bill is Y dollars, which is substantially less. And even though we're making that increase, we're still far under what that Denver increase is. So to compare the two isn't quite, um, isn't quite apples to apples. Well, I'd use it to your advantage if you could. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll see how, it, well, we have so far, it really, it, when, you, when you do that comparison and we're all the way on the left-hand side because we're the lowest rates and fees, it, it, it does really uh, highlight it fairly uh, obviously. Yeah, yeah. Okay, anybody else have anything? Uh, uh, Chairman, if I may also add, also in the process of all this is the, the customer assistance program development. So we will be uh, making reference to that as part, of, uh, as part of this flyer. And that's another thing that we're building out in the background based on council's direction um, and, and really getting the application form and the, the eligibility requirements finalized and really the mechanics with working through um, Arapahoe County. Okay, Peter, very good. Any other old business? Anybody has old business? How about staff choice? I think, I think we've covered everything we need to cover today, so I uh, don't have anything more. Well, I have one little comment uh, in today's paper uh, at the Denver Post, February 9th, and then I saw it on television last night. They talk about hackers tried to poison a water supply in a Florida city, and uh, they tried to uh, change the level of sodium hydroxide in the main ingredients in drain cleaner. It's the main ingredients in drain cleaner, and I don't know, had you heard that or seen anything about that? Yeah, I did. I did actually read that article last night. Uh, yeah, I think they the what I read was the operator uh, saw someone manipulating their mouse on the screen and moved that the chemical feed level from 100 to 11,100. And fortunately, they saw that and were able to bring it right back down quickly. Um, I think for you know, it, it's a it is a thing that we in the water industry are are constantly paying attention to. However, I will say as an industry, we are, we are somewhat behind as it relates to that kind of, um, that kind of extensive cybersecurity. Never it's something that we're working on as part of our, as part of our uh, integrations and control system and revamping all of that. That's some of the work that Steve and his staff are working on. And um, that, you know, what I, when I talked about, Last year, when I talked about some of the the uh, uh, infrastructure, the 
the panels that we have do we have to go on eBay in order to replace the parts because the manufacturer no longer supports the parts. That's the kind of things that we're, we're trying to catch up on to ensure. And, and while we're catching up on those things, we're bringing in uh, the, the proper uh, experts to ensure that as we make those updates, we're also accounting for um, any kind of cybersecurity that uh, improvement that needs to be done as well. Additionally, the AWEA assessment that we just did, one of the things that that looks at is cybersecurity. So at least it gets us a baseline of understanding of where we're at as it relates to cybersecurity and, and gives us a, you know, helps us uh, establish a plan moving forward to, to get that addressed as well. I think as you, you're, you're probably seeing based on our discussions, there's, there's, a, there's a number of areas that we are, we are trying to move things forward all at once. And, and it's uh, between physical infrastructure, cybersecurity, billing, staffing, all those kinds of things. And we are, we are, we're getting traction, I would, I would say, and we're, we're definitely getting things moving. It, it's, we're, we're trying to keep the balls in the air to make sure that we're protecting the, the water supply and also protecting our customers. But it, uh, it, I read the thing and I was like, oh, now we get, I forgot about this too. And we, we really have to focus on that as well. Yeah. Well, you got all the balls in the air at one time and I don't envy you. You got a lot of work and I appreciate your work. Well, I will say that part of the part of what's making that work is the people we're hiring. And so Good. Steve and Angela and Brenda and Mike all on this call are all new to utilities within the last year. And that's why this stuff is moving forward. And so I think that as we continue to bring more, um, more qualified experts on, on board, we'll really get a handle on this and get a lot of this stuff moving forward. Well, I can think I can speak for the board. We do appreciate your efforts and thanks a lot. Absolutely, and we appreciate the support of the board and the council. Does anybody else have any other comments? If not, I I, I do, I, I do. There. So Chair Wiggins, I'm wondering where Ruth is. <laughs> I could get her if you want, or she's back. Yeah, well, because your name says Ruth Wiggins, but I'm going to tease you with that and say, I'm just so impressed that you, I mean, we've made huge transitions on the water and sewer board to go completely online electronically for meetings. I mean, there was a time where, you know, people were upset when they got things electronically in the email for documents. <laughs> and I'm just so impressed. You've done such a great job leading us. I just want to thank you. Oh, so well, thank you very much. Like like I was telling the other ones at the beginning, I uh, did get to go through something here. I did get injected with antique preservative fluid yesterday, Yay! commonly known as COVID-19 vaccine. So Excellent. I'm an antique, see? So <laughs> anyway, <laughs> just mentioned it to you for a while. Thanks for, I'll pass on the information to my wife. <laughs> okay, if nobody has anything else, we'll adjourn this meeting and thank you and I'll see you next all next month. Take care. Thank Good you, night. everybody. Good night.